Hello, this is SJ Talks Online coming back at you with another video. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please, and thank you. Um, I'm going to put um, the video where I did, I talked about Risa Tisa. Um, I'm going to link that video up to this one. Um, Risa Tisa has got signed, I forget what agency that is, she's got signed with a major... A entertainment management company it's a, it's a big one it's a major one something like that um she apparently they liked her she they liked her storytelling so well that they decided to i don't know what she's going to be doing but she's going to be up and coming she's going to be doing some things i mean when i found that out i was like dang i need to step up my game <laughs> I need to step up on my game. This social media thing can lead to big things. <laughs> but she is a great storyteller. I mean, she had me pretty engaged. Uh, when I looked at it in, in, in its entirety, I think it's like 50 parts. I, I was pretty engaged, you know, in it. I mean, yeah. I mean, she was very detailed and everything. And so that's good for her. Good for her that they that they, that they did that. That she... She's going to be up and coming, you know, so it's be interesting to see um, what 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 they're going to come up with, uh, what kind of project projects she's going to be getting involved in. But what I want to talk about is um, because her 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 ex-husband came on here on here. I don't know if you've seen his interviews. He's been he's been doing interviews, refuting, try to refute everything that she's saying. And other women that other his other exes have came on TikTok or YouTube and TikTok or whatever uh, to pretty much uh, confirm her story. He's had other exes come forth and say basically the same thing that she's saying. And he's on here um, trying to say she's lying and all that stuff. But he's got other exes coming on here that's, uh, you know, confirming her story, you know, Um and they're, they, they're saying the same things that he is a pathological liar. And some of these men are path, pathological liars. You got to watch them. Some of them are pathological liars. Um, but this guy seemed like he lied about everything. <laughs> his job, his family members, he lied about everything. And I think his family members have made a statement too. And I think his family members, um, a couple of his family members have said that they, yeah, they in fact knew that he was a liar. So he's trying to reflute everything, but yeah, where there's smoke, there's fire. You got too many people that's coming forth and saying that it's true that you are a liar, pathological liar. So I just wish, wish Risa Tisa all the best. Um, but what I want to talk about is people are still kind of talking about this. Um, first of all, um, I want to, I was going to do this in a separate video, but I think I'll go ahead and, and include it into this one. Why is they body shaming Risa Tisa? They're saying that just, that happened to her. He did her like that because she was heavy because she's a plus size woman. They're saying that he did her like that because she's a plus size woman. And, um, Charlemagne, the gods, uh, uh called her a uh, big back called her Big Back. I think it was Big Back he called her. And that is not okay. I, that is not okay. I, I don't know why he thinks it's okay to call her names. He don't even know her. I don't know why he thinks it's okay to call her names. So the manosphere, um, a lot of people are coming forward because this guy claimed to be a, a BP. I guess he claimed to be a BP or something like that in the company. And some people were saying, well, a BP would never date a plus size woman. And People are body shaming her and making all kinds of comments about her, her weight and saying that um, the only reason why um, he did her like that because she was a plus size woman and all this kind of stuff. Well, why did, why are some of our most beautiful, talented women in the world like um, Beyonce, um, Halle Berry, you know, she's uh, been through quite, a, you know, she's been through some relationships um, some of our most beautiful, talented women are going through the same things with men. 
cheat, cheating and lying and some of our most beautiful talented women are going through the same things with cute bodies they're not plus size okay so it it happens to all women it happens to attractive women it ha it happens to all women of any um age race size it don't matter what size you are um you know i i got got when i was a lot smaller than what i am now and a lot younger and a lot smaller than what i am now i got got so it doesn't matter what size a woman is a woman uh, any race any size any age can go basically go are going through the same things so people need to stop with that people need to stop with that narrative that it's because she's a plus size woman why he did her like that because okay well why why are some of these um small women going through the, the same things why are these some of these small women having to endure cheating and domestic violence and and, and, and lying, a man uh, running game on them and using them and taking advantage of them. Why are some of these smaller uh, women going through the same things? It doesn't matter. So people need to stop with that narrative. And in and, and, and this, and this thing that always criticizing black women because of their size is, is not okay. But that's what people are saying. And, and it's, it's not okay. It doesn't matter what her weight is. This man is a liar. You know, it doesn't matter what her weight is. That can happen to any. You got some older women out here that fall prey to the same thing. You know, you got younger women out here that's that's women of all sizes. It doesn't matter what size you are. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter uh, what walk of life you're, you're in or whether you got kids or you don't got kids. You got some manipulators out all uh, if you are a, a woman and you, you and a man could pick up any type of vulnerability in you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you can still get got okay so people need to stop with that narrative that because she's a plus size woman no because i've been seeing him i've been seeing him on youtube doing interviews and he don't he don't look small to me he looked like a plus size man to me he don't look like he's too small to me. So people need to stop with that. Stop body shaming Risa Tisa. That's not okay. I'm a woman of a particular size. I'm a plus size woman. And, you know, it has nothing to do with anything. You know, it, it, it has a lot to do with, um, and I'm about to go into that. If, uh, if, if, if you don't know your worth as a woman, and you you're not looking out for red flags and things like that then you can get god it doesn't matter who you are what size you are attractive whatever on the beauty scale where where you're at on the beauty scale it doesn't matter every woman in this world including myself could get god okay any age any race whatever size whatever Okay, with that being said, I want to talk about what can we learn? What what the what the rest of us women, what is the the rest of the woman's fear? What can we learn from this story? What can we learn from Risa Tisa? That's the question that I ask. What are the lessons? There are lots of lessons in this this scenario. This this uh, situation, there are lots of there are lots of lessons in this, and as women out here, particularly women that desire to get married, you know that desire a mate. Um, me myself, I'm I'm not looking. Um, I don't really desire to get married, and I'm not looking. Um, if I'm single for the rest of my life, I'm okay with that. Um, it took me a long time to get to this place. Um, it, I didn't get to this place overnight. Uh, it took me a very, very long time to get to a place to where um, I'm at peace with being alone, and I'm at I'm at peace um, with for not having. If I if I never get married, well, my feelings won't be hurt, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. 
I'm okay with that. As long as I have God, I'm never, you're never really, remember, you're never really alone as long as you have God. It's all about your mindset. It's all about your mindset. And, and, and even when I am, when I'm, I'm by myself, I know that I have God. I know that I can talk to God and, you know, um, and I can talk to you guys <laughs> and, 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 and that's good enough for me because I was, I was thinking last night, I said, there is no man in this world that will love me more than God does. There is no man in this world that can love me more than God. God can love me more than any man or anybody on this planet. So I'm cool with that. I'm cool. And like I said, I just, I said in another video, I don't know if I have um, the emotional energy to even, or even physical energy to even put into a marriage because marriage is work. So I hear that's what they say. Marriage is a lot of work. I don't know if I have the emotional energy or the physical energy or the mental energy uh, to even put into a marriage at this stage in my life, you know, to be, I'm just being honest, but, um, that's my situation. But a lot of women, you know, do desire to get married. Women of all ages, they desire to get married. You know, they like to have that partner and there's nothing wrong with wanting to get married. There's nothing wrong. What is, 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 is what, what the problem is, is that women think, um, if you, especially if you want to have a child, if you want to have a child, there, well, there is a, a time clock with that. And so a lot of women feel that extra pressure if they don't want to have children outside of marriage. They and that was the situation with her. She didn't want to have any children. She she wanted to have a family. And she wanted a family and you know and there's a certain window of time that physically a woman can have a safely have a baby. So a lot of women feel in that pressure because of that. And um you know we have society we live in a patriotic society that says that, you know, you're not a real woman unless you got a husband and a family. And that's not true. That that your that your that your worth is wrapped up in your whole worth is wrapped up in being married and be, being a, a mother and being a wife. And if you're not a mother or you're not either one of those things or both of those things then that diminishes your worth as a woman. And I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree. I totally disagree with um, a woman's worth being wrapped up rather than the fact that she has a husband or if she's a mother. A woman doesn't have to be a mother or a wife to to be validated, to, to have worth. Because God tells us that we have worth regardless of what our situation is in life. He tells us that we have worth so that society tells women that you, you're nothing and you're nothing without. And I did, the, I, I showed the little clip and I might, I might tag that. I might tag that. In, I might put that in my um box too. I showed you that clip where that old lady was talking to, well, she was 102 or something. She was, uh, I think she was a hundred years old or something like that. And she was talking to her granddaughter and, and was, was telling her granddaughter you ain't nothing without a man. And then I, I did another video in addition to that. Um, um, I further expanded on that. So, and, and I explained that in that time period, women couldn't do anything without a man. You know, you couldn't, and back in the olden days, you couldn't purchase a home. You couldn't rent a home. You couldn't buy a car. You couldn't, you couldn't vote. I don't even think you can, vote. I mean, you couldn't do nothing without a man in the olden days. And so that's where, that mentality, the, the silent generation, you know, that's where that mentality comes from, that you're nothing without a man. But nowadays, women got rights. Women got all kinds of freedoms. Women can buy homes. Women can buy cars. Women can do all kinds of stuff now without a man. Okay. So we're in a different time period now. But the thing is, with Risa Tisa, she said she wanted to get married. She said she wanted to get married. She felt like she was getting older and she felt that pressure to land a mate. And, and that's what makes women vulnerable to these situations. That's what makes women um, vulnerable to get into these situations. 
Because and there's these and there's some of these men out here, they play on that. Some of these men men play on the fact that a certain percentage of women want to get married. More and more women are starting to embrace singleness. But a lot of men they, they think that um you know that women want to get married. And so a lot of men, they play on that. They play on that. And and that's something that women have to be careful of. Because she was saying she wanted to get married. She felt that pressure. And a lot of women feel that pressure, particularly if they don't want children outside of marriage. They feel that pr pressure. And the time clock is tick ticking physically as far as the baby making window. And so women are feeling that pressure. A lot of women are starting to decenter men, and I did a video talking about that too. Um, whereas um, they're not putting their their all their focus in life on, or they're not they're not um, they're not they're not um, centering their whole world around a man or or lack thereof lack thereof whether they have a man or not. They're, they're not they're not. Uh, centering their whole existence on how having a man or lack thereof you know what i mean because there was a time where um when um and I, I would say i was guilty of um centering men you know at one time or another um you know there was a time where i, I was like you know when i w i wanted to get married but i wasn't married you know i was um, you know, de getting depressed and stuff like that because I didn't, it didn't happen in the time frame that I thought it would happen. And so that's what women are starting to do. Women are start starting to decenter men and, and realize that, hey, I can live a fulfilled life without a man. I don't have, a, have to have a man to live a fulfilled life. I don't have to be married to live a fulfilled life. Fulfilled life. And I'm going to be happy regardless because I made that decision a few years ago. I'm going to do me and I'm going to do be happy regardless of whether I got a mate or not, you know? And I think that's pretty sad. I think it's pretty sad when, when women are miserable, you know, they can't find any joy in life because they don't have a man. And it's so many things in life to, it's so many things in life to focus on besides a man. You know, I got friends, I have family, you know, I got my mom. I got my kids, and I got my sons, I got my grandkids. You know what I mean? You know, I you know, I could I, I enjoy my own company. You know, I enjoy my own company and you know, you know, doing me, just doing me. Cuz I'm kind of introverted. So I I en I enjoy my own company. So um am I upset because there's not a man in my life? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I I could care less. Like some of these men come on here and say, you know, try to make little snide remarks. Like a guy came in on that. I, I did a video talking about um um telling <laughs> single talking about single men with children. I got almost a thousand hits on that video. <laughs> and I might come through and do a video responding to the comments in that video. This guy said, Where your man at? Where your husband at? I said, I ain't got one. I, I said, <laughs> and, and, that's, and, and I'm happy about that or something I said. You know, it don't make no, if that's supposed to hurt my feelings. You pointing out the fact that I ain't got no man. Where your man at? Where your husband at? Ain't that supposed to hurt my feelings? <laughs> Try again. Try again. <laughs> I might be a more upset if you said are you broke <laughs> I might be a more upset about that <laughs> but that's what I'm saying you know and I think that's the lesson to be learned here is even though you want to get married and there's nothing wrong with wanting to get married there's nothing wrong with that I don't want to never want to send a message to women that there's something wrong with wanting to get married it's nothing wrong with wanting to get married. Um, you know, if you if you got the right person, it could be a beautiful situation if you have the right person. So there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, even when a woman desires to get married, she still needs to decenter men. 
still it's still best to decenter men because like I stated in that other video, you're going to make better choices. You're going to make better choices when you decenter men, you make better choices. You 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 know and 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 I think that was the the lesson here is that she wanted to get she wanted to get married and she felt time was running out. And so she didn't see the red flags. She seen the red flags, but she ignored them. It sounds like from that story, she's seen a lot of red flags, but she ignored a lot of stuff. And then when she uh, she married the guy, well, she was already emotionally invested in the guy and was already married to him. So by the time she found out he was running game, well, she was already fully committed to this guy. So... um. That's why it is important to dissent a man, even if you have that desire to get married. You know, pray and ask God to 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 uh, help you. If you meet a guy, it's important to pray about it. Ask God to show you. Because I was dating this one guy I met online, and he was a nice guy, but he just wasn't for me. And I did pray to God. I, I prayed and asked him um, to show me, and 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 he showed me. You know. And you have to be willing to open up your eyes, not only pray and ask God to show you, but you got to be willing to open up your eyes to what he shows you. Okay. If you're not willing to open up your eyes to what he shows you, then you can't blame nobody but yourself, you know, that you ignored the red flags. So that's very important for women to do that. It's very important for women to do that. It is it, background checks is very, very important. And that was another thing that lesson in this is to do background checks. Go find out, go find a couple of ex-girlfriends and ex-wives and talk to them. If you got an ex-wife, it ain't nothing wrong with talking to the ex-girlfriend. It ain't nothing wrong with finding or if you, out who she is and go and talking to her. There's nothing wrong with that. Do your research. Do your research. Check this guy out. Check him out thoroughly, you know, and just any red flags. Look out for any red flags. And sometimes the red flag flags are there, but because women want to get married so bad, they tend to ignore them. It was just like that when I talked about um, men with children. In that video, I talked about my oldest son's dad, how when I hooked up with him, he had three baby mamas. And it did not dawn on me at that time. It just, at 20 years old, it just didn't occur to me that that was problematic. You know? And that's why a lot of times these older men, there's a 14-year age gap between me and my um, oldest son's dad. And that's why a lot of times they like to, to he was in his 30s when I, I was 20 years old. He was like 34, 35 years old. I was, he was 34 years old. It's just a 14 year age gap. I was 20, he was 34. So that's problematic too, because these older men know they that's that's why they go a lot of times they go after these younger women, but that's not another topic. And so that's what I'm saying, that you, you have to look for the red flags. And some of them are just are waving. They're waving right there in front of your face. And if you if you really really wanting to get married and you really really want to get into a relationship you you women have the tendency to ignore them don't ignore them don't ignore the red flags it it it, it, it and, and look at the red flags before you get emotionally invested in this guy before you get emotionally invested because i know sometimes I know sometimes there could be a chemistry there and I know sometimes the chemistry can be strong and I get all that, but just stay prayed up and, and look for the red flags because at, at the end of the day, us women, we end up on the losing end. When these, when these guys run games on us, we really end up on the losing end. They mess around and go on to the next woman. They'll, they'll, they'll stomp on our heart and pull it out out of our chest, rip it up and step on it and then go on to the next woman. And then now he's doing the same thing to her. So we really wind up on the losing end, especially if there's, if we get pregnant and we have a baby, we in this man, 
is not only not a good mate, but he's not a good father. We, we really wind up on the losing end. So as women, we have to be vigilant. We have to really, and I say we too, because don't, you know, I don't mean I still can't get got, you know, you know, I can't see it happening, but hey, you know, I put me in there too. We got to, I, I can still get got, you know, but so that's why I say we all have to be careful. I can meet a guy and, you know, he, woo, you know what I'm saying? So I don't mean I can't get God, but we have to, we have to look, we have to pray and we have to really, really look out for those red flags. Even if we feel like I'm falling in love with this guy, but you still got to look for those red flags. And I think that's the lesson in the story. It's just, oh, well, how many red flags does she see in from the very beginning? She sees some red flags from the very beginning, but she kept on going, you know what I'm saying? Until she was really emotionally and legally invested to, into this guy. And so that's what I'm saying. Before the relationship goes any further, you know, pay attention to those red flags. Pay attention to them. And prayer, 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 prayer. God will show you. He will show you. But you got to be willing to open up your eyes and see what he's showing you. You know? Because you you asking for his help. Okay? You asking for his help. You got to be willing to open up your eyes and, and see whatever it is that he shows you. You know? And so I think that's the lesson in this. And it, it sounds like she learned. And just taking accountability. Taking accountability. And, and I've seen throughout the whole video that she took accountability. She took, I was very impressed with that. She took accountability throughout the whole video. And, you know, throughout that whole series, she took, she did take accountability. And that's important too, to take accountability. And sometimes, you know, we got to do the inner work. We have to do the inner work to find out, okay, why am I attracting certain types of men? Why I keep gravitating towards cert certain types of men? Sometimes it takes going into therapy and just doing the inner work. Staying single for a time, too, because all this, these years that I've been single, I figured a lot of things out. I figured a lot of things out. And I, 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 I learned, I realized that um, it, there was a reason why I was gravitating towards certain types of men, you know, was picking certain types of men, you know. And so when you when you spent that time single, a lot of times a lot of women do need to be single for a time. So there's a lot of things that God, and, and especially if you pray in and you, you draw closer to him, there's a lot of things that he will reveal to you. And 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 it and so that's why women need that time. But you got some women out here, they hopping from one man to the next. And how is that how is that helping you? Women need to be single for a time. You know, that's important. And so I think there's a lots of lessons to be learned in, in, in this Risa Tisa situation. Um it's lots of lessons to be learned. But let me know, hit me up in the comment section and um let me know what your thoughts are on that. Um, that, you know, do you think that there was a lot of good lessons in that scenario for women to learn? I think it was. I think it's a cautionary tale because you got some, I'm telling you, you got some Academy Award winning performers out here. Some of these men, I'm telling you, Hollywood needs to go out and do some scouting because a lot of these men are so talented out here. Um, that you got some Academy Award winning performances. These men be putting on Academy Award winning performances. I mean, these men really, that man sound like he's, they, they should give him, they should sign him too. He's a good actor. That Legion, he's an excellent actor. They ought to sign him too. <laughs> I mean, you got some really good actors on out here. That's why I said, I can still get God. I can still get God. Of course I can. You know, uh, it's going to be hard. But th th I can still get God. Because you got some actors out here. I'm telling you, you got some actors out here that can put on a heck of a performance. Yep. So us 
me and all women, we got to be careful. We have to be careful and we got to be diligent and recognize those red flags. So hit me in the comment section, ladies. Let me know what your thoughts are, men too, um, what your thoughts are on that. And make sure you hit that like button because if you hit that like button, that pushes that algorithm up. Pushes it really pushes the algorithm up if you hit that like. So make make sure you're hitting that like. And please do me a favor and hit the subscribe because I hate to see high numbers on my videos, but not people ain't hitting the subscribe button. You know, I, I hate that. When I see I love to see the high numbers. I love that. But okay, out of nine hundred and almost a thousand hits. How come my subscriber count should be, should I, I don't know. I, I should have got at least, I don't know, 200 people out of that hitting the subscribe button. So I'm loving the high numbers, but hit the subscribe button. Even if you don't watch me that, if, even if you're not going, there's lots of, you know how many, I probably subscribe to hundred. I am a subscribe to hundreds of people on YouTube, but there's certain people that I watch all the time. Okay. So. Even if you don't watch my videos all the time. Because I know that there's plenty of other content. There's like 40 million content creators on YouTube. It, even if you don't watch me all the time. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and do that. And then hit that like button. Because that pushes. If you like the video. That pushes that algorithm right up there. It gets it right up there. Because I'm still trying to grow here. I'm still trying to grow. Okay. Thank you. Please and thank you. And um, until the next video, you guys be blessed.